And it doesn't take a lot to get these creases out. And you can also let your camera fall over. <laughs> So a little while back my mom sent me a parcel and inside it was a lovely colorful and bright quilting fabric. Um, this is from Cafe Facet um, and it's quite colorful as you can see. All the colors. Um, I wouldn't say I'm especially a fan of this but it's not for me it's for my mom she wants me to make a gorgeous blouse for her and since I've made blouses for her in the past I I already have a pattern and she doesn't have to come in with the COVID restrictions and come in for a fitting with mouth masks to cover ourselves and protect ourselves from maybe infecting each other um, so I can do this on a distance and I thought I'd use this bright and colorful fabric to show you how to pattern match a fabric like this because if you can see there's large circles on it and it would be really awkward if these circles were just boop on your boobs. <laughs> um, you don't want that. You'd preferably want the biggest part of a pattern to be centered on your blouse. And since the blouse opens up, um, you really have to think about this before you start cutting. So uh, that would be the subject of today's video. And well, I've got a project on hand. That's quite useful. First thing I'm going to do is iron this. I want to get rid of the fabric fold because I will be cutting this single panel. So I'm not going to fold the fabric double and cut two panels at once because that's a recipe for disaster. Um, as soon as you start cutting this and it's off center a little bit or the patterns of top and bottom fabric don't match up perfectly, you've already got a problem. So if I want to go pattern matching, I always cut my pattern pieces from the single fabric so it's not double on my table. The trouble with this is of course that you have to remember to flip the pattern over to get mirror images because if you pick, cut a right piece, then the other has to be its mirror. Otherwise you've got two right pieces. So that's something to watch out for. First off, let's iron this fabric and then put it on the table and I'll show you how to go about this. Right, so I'm ironing from the wrong side of the fabric. And you can see down here, this is where the crease is. But I like to cover the entire thing with steam just to pre-shrink it as they used to say at my uh, my old school. The iron is set to cotton which is very hot but not the hottest which is linen and I just use ample amounts of steam and you can just see the fold has already disappeared. Okay, so, so if I were to fold the fabric double, this is the front panel of the blouse and you can see that would eat up most of the fabric width, just, just the front panel. This is the dart for the bust and the waist dart. And then this one is center front and then this is the facing. I hope that's in frame. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> so this is the facing. This folds over twice, like once and then twice, and that's the button stand. So the pattern tells me exactly what center front is. And seeing as how the fabric is this narrow, I can move it about a bit, but I don't have much room to, to play with this. So I could, if I fold the fabric open, move it more to the side. So let me show you that. I'll just fold it over on center front. So we can see exactly where center front will be. So that works actually quite well. And then you've got one of the bright circles 
above the bust because this is the bust point so it's above the bust and we've got one on the bottom below the bust on the waistline so that's actually not bad but just to check let's put, things, put something on here to keep it in place just to, for the moment because what's under here I'd like to see that as well so that this is where the bust point is so that's the top of the bust call it where the nipple is um, that's not actually in the center of one of these circles so it wouldn't draw unnecessary attention it just has this rather flimsy green circle right where the nipple will be if we were to move this over to center on a different circle the problem is that I've got a very narrow strip between the selvage and the first panel and then I've got a slightly larger strip on the other side that will probably not actually fit another panel because you know if, if this is your front panel what would fit here it wouldn't fit a sleeve it would fit your collar pieces but they're on the side which is not actually that strange for a blouse you could fit a, a separate button stand there and maybe some cuffs but keep in mind that we need two of these because we're cutting this from sim single fabric so if I were to flip this over I would have a slim similar patch on the other side as well so I would like to try this to be as economical as I can so not centered on some weird circle off to the side but actually quite close to where I would have cut it if I just folded the fabric in half like you normally would just to be economical about this I've grabbed some pins and I folded this over so that it's centered on the center of each green thing. So the, the center front of my pattern is this line. It says, so right here it says MV, which is mid front in Dutch. So that's my center front. That's where the buttonholes will be and the buttons. So that's where the two panels will overlap and, you know, that's where you want to focus your pattern matching on. So this is folded over on center front and then if I, <clears throat> if I were to put it right off to the side that would be really hard to match because you'd never get a, a true circle. So this is the center of the circle, this little blue circle right here and let's just match that right there. So this looks like it's actually centered over the design but that doesn't tell you everything because sometimes these fabrics are a little stretched when they're printed and then whatever is printed straight may not actually be on the straight of the grain of the fabric. And to check that you can always grab a ruler, put it perpendicular to the selvage and then check if your center front is actually straight of grain. So this looks pretty decent actually. So I've matched it on the side here at the selvage and then over here you can see center front is actually quite straight so I'm, I'm pleased with this. This is good enough. Good enough for government work. <laughs> so let's pin this in place. All right now this is stuck. We do need these bits. So fold it open. And pin it in place. There. That's one done. Okay. For the back panel, we need to cut this on the fold. So I've lined the center back up with the center of this lime green circle. And I've matched the top up here as well to the center 
of this lime green circle. But I've lined it up so that the when I fold the seam allowance over, it goes right into the center of that circle. Because there's also a yoke piece that comes in here. I'm sorry, this way around. <laughs> yeah, of course. So these will have to be stitched together. And what I would love to have is that the yoke would match the rest of the back as well. So in order to do that, I've lined up the seam allowance over here. Like where the seam is going to be, it's going to be straight through the middle of this center circle. And if I do that as well with the matching yoke piece, it will match up perfectly with the center of the circle there, even though these two have a different shape because there's a tiny dart right here that folds it narrower to the shoulder. Even though it's not exactly straight right there, right here where it matters, where the eye is drawn to the center of your back, that's where it will match the pattern. And off to the side, under the arm, the side seam, those aren't the most important parts to match your pattern. Center front, center back, any, any dividing seams over the back, those are the points that matter. So, I put this down until it was perfect, checked it a couple of times, pinned it into place, and then used my trusty chalk pencil to draw around the pattern so that I could then flip it over to make its mirror image matching the chalk line perfectly. And then this part gets pinned into place and is ready for cutting as well. So when I start cutting, I will cut out by the chalk line and go around my pattern piece in one go. So it's a single pattern, some single piece. Um, it doesn't have to be cut down the center back. We don't want a seam in center back. And now we only have one final large piece and then the rest is just small pieces. I still have to do the second front, but I will do that to show you how I match the pattern on that uh, in a bit. I still have quite a lot of fabric on this side. And that should be ample to get the sleeves out of. If we look at the yoke that has to attach to this, of course we cannot cut it right above it because we want to match this center of this lime green flower. So. Because there is a seam allowance, you cannot, they, they actually have to overlap. Um, you can't cut fabric overlapping, so you need to scooch it over. And if I were to take the next flower over, that means it's, <laughs> there's a quite a large gap here of fabric that we will have to just toss out. So that would be an absolute waste. But luckily, the green flowers are quite abundant. So what if I just take this one right here? match up the center back and then this one is also cut on the fold so match it up here and then fold it back it's still a waste of almost 10 centimeters but it's far less than this this much it's about half so that's a, that's a decent compromise i think well as you can see there is still plenty of space for the sleeves to be put in and that's the last really big piece but I'm not going to cut this out yet. Instead I'm going to focus first on the front panel because I really 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 need to get that bright on the opposite side of that central green flower. Here we go. Nothing like a good old measurement to make sure you've got this right. So from the selvage to my center front and my center front as you remember is on the center of the green circles that is exactly 40 centimeters now if we move the fabric over to the side a bit you can see we've got more green circles here and as long as this measurement from the selvage to the center of the green circle that is exactly 40 centimeters so that is perfect that will actually fit pretty perfectly. I'm so pleased. If this hadn't fit, then 
I would have moved the other front panel down to the end of the fabric where we just put the sleeves to see if we had enough fabric. But it looks like the center front panels will both be able to fit next to each other right here. So this is a good sign. I can cut this out now. Let me cut this out and then I'll show you the trick I was talking about. The first body panel was cut out over here and now for my major trick you find you flip it over and you find the exact same spot like you can see through this fabric where the green circles are and you try to match them up as well as you can on this side now I realized I've made a mistake and you'll figure it out once I put this in place because this matches up perfectly or sort of perfectly right here it's not 100% accurate because there's a tiny little bit of difference over here but you can match the circle and now this is where it goes wrong because the back panel I pinned down here actually protrudes over my front panel here so I'm very happy I didn't cut anything yet and I can I can sort of see and if I can fix this by either moving the back panel or cutting out the front panel in another spot. But this is the basics. You can see that over here the circle matches perfectly. But right here it doesn't. So this is the arm size, so that's not a big deal. But there's definitely a difference in the print between left and right. So it's not a perfectly symmetrical print. However, you can match on the center front as well as you can, and it, it will look pretty, even if this circle, you know, doesn't match its counterpart on the other side. These two will actually be nowhere near each other. So the center front line, that's the important one, and we can match that pretty well. I'll be puzzling with this for a little bit, and through the power of editing, I will show you what I managed to do. After cutting carefully, uh, cutting the interfacing, uh, gluing in the interfacing, I've actually spent a couple of hours, more or less, um, sewing up the darts, sewing up the button stand facing and the shoulder yoke. So I could put this on the mannequin and see where we're at. Um, as you know, I've tried to match the center front as well as I can and so far, I am definitely very pleased with how this turns out. Of course, I can still tweak this a little bit with the placement of the buttons, so that when I put in the buttons, they will have to be perfect and the circle will actually um, match up perfectly. But uh, even up here and down here with the partial circles, it matches up really, really well. I'm less pleased, however, with the back, and I'll show you why. So, the back also has darts. And I've been trying to match this little center of this focus circle, as you, as you will. Um, is focus circle actually a thing? Shall we hashtag focus circle it? Focus circle, it's the circle we focus on when we're watching the blouse when we're watching the pattern. So I've matched up the center of this focus circle quite well with the top and the bottom. So the yoke and the back panel both have the same focus circle and they meet on this shoulder seam, uh, on this, sorry, yoke seam. But although this side matches pretty well, on this side we've got a difference of about a centimeter 
So the top is extending more than a centimeter out from where the bottom circle ends and it's really, really jarring. Um, so I found a different spot on the fabric where, the, where I could cut the shoulder yoke because you always start with the larger panels first and then squeeze the smaller panels into different parts of the fabric where there's still some space. Um, but if you look at the, um, the circles here, the one on the shoulder yoke has the same one on either side. So this is a darker and this is a darker circle, but the one on the back panel actually has a different kind of pattern right next to it. Because this is a petrol circle and this is the same dark circle we have up here. So what did I do? I cut it from a different part of the fabric that had part of the pattern repeated, but not all of it, because otherwise this petrol circle would also sort of be here and it's not. So I definitely took a different part of the fabric. Could I have prevented this? Probably if I've had, if I would have had more fabric, I could have cut it differently. I could have made sure. I have to be honest, I didn't notice that they were cut from a different part of the fabric until I sewed this, whole, this yoke seam. But I definitely notice it now and it's jarring and it's irksome and it has to be fixed. It is done. Let's put it on the mannequin. Perfect mat pattern matching down the front. And, well, I won't say it's perfect, but at least I managed to fix it down the back. My mom already calls this her Corona blouse because the large hashtag focus circle reminds her of the coronavirus. Um, I'll not tell her that well, I chose it because it looks like the coronavirus, but if you look at the at the fabric, the bright lime green is really one of the eye catchers. Sleeves are done as well. There's absolutely no pattern matching on the sleeves, but this is a project finished and ready to go to a very happy recipient, I'm sure. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing. Leave a note in the comments if there's something you noticed about this video or if you have something you'd like to say about this hashtag focus circle blouse. And show me your efforts if you try your hand at pattern matching as well. Thank you for joining me. See you next time. Bye.